My name is Howard Cash. I'm, I'm a fine, fine art and documentary photographer. But out here, a lot of people know me for making buttons. So it's more or less an activism kind of thing where I deal with the uh, positive aspects of black life, um, the heroes and some say sheroes whose shoulders we're standing on. And a lot of the things that have to do with police brutality and uh, positive reinforcement of being black. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm sure you have a lot of um, well, you have a lot of experience, and you've seen a lot of things change over the years. Correct. Um, what what advice could you give to like what are the changes for us? Yeah, what are the changes that you've seen in society? I, th I think there needs to be more entrepreneurship. I think that COVID taught us a lot about being entrenched in regular jobs, and I think that if we there were certain businesses that were doing well online. Uh, I think we need, need to know about the stock market. Um, definitely more entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. and, and what about the uh, progression that um, that black people have made? In, in the Thank you so much. Well, black people have made a, a lot, a lot. You know, in some respects, we're still pre civil rights. I mean, uh, because our for every hundred dollars a, a, a black white person has, I think we have five. So in some respects, uh, financially we're still in the same boat, but we have more access to information, and it's now an information age. So brothers and sisters who do not want to go to school, it doesn't make sense. Uh, however, they have erected a. Um, uh, a system where they put us in jail uh, to, to, to supplement slave labor, modern day slave labor, and so we have to avoid that. So if you don't have opportunity to access, you're more likely to wind up in a correctional facility. But if you have entrepreneurship, then you create your own opportunities and access. I went to a boarding school, a black boarding school. My mother sent me there because they were they were having a teacher's strike. Yeah, I was getting in a little trouble. And she worked for Spofford, so she didn't want me to be coming in there. I found it a lot better outside of New York because there was no stigma to learning. And I think that's what black kids get the most. They get a stigma to learning. They always say you're trying to be white. But that's not it. You, you, you want to compete. You want to be able to put together. Um, uh, I'll call it bodies of knowledge that will allow you to compete against white America. And so. And then I went to live in Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria. Yeah, I lived in Nigeria for several years. So I lived. I'm, I'm Nigerian. Oh, four years. I lived in Lagos. Okay. A place called Oshogbo, uh -huh. uh, on Picardu Road. And so, you know, I probably, I wouldn't have changed that. Well, got a nice spot here, huh? I finished school in, 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 in L.A. Uh -huh. um, so, I, I probably, you know, I, I, I probably say in between my college years, I partied a little too much, like most people. Uh -huh. But eventually I, I settled down and, and got my education mm -hmm. and got an opportunity to go to Ghana first and Nigeria second. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was pretty cool. And that's where you, you, you see a lot of entrepreneurship yeah. in West Africa, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many ideas, there's so much energy yeah. that, you know, people uh, find that they they can find in a regular job, mm -hmm. especially if they're artists. And so this, you know, they, they're like exploding with, with with wanting to be part of sometimes things that are new and sometimes things are reinvented. Mm -hmm. So it, it was that was that was really where I saw the power of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And so coming back here, I aligned myself with some entrepreneurs. Some businessmen, and, and, and therefore, and also some some books, mm -hmm. George Sabir, um, Napoleon Hill, 
um, um, and several other artists, several other authors that that discuss um, the power of thinking big, that discuss the importance of how to how to how can I say how can you how to navigate your interests uh, towards economic rewards. Um, Dr. Um, Joy DeGruy talks yeah. a lot about um, post-traumatic slavery system mm -hmm. syndrome rather, and how we don't allow ourselves the joy and the freedom of, of being unlimited. So, you know, that's why I said to you, when I was in Nigeria, it was good to be around and they didn't have the resources, they didn't have the conveniences, but they had the drive. Yeah. You know, and then there are a lot of there are a lot of things we've done here, embedded and mm -hmm. but there's a media here that, that's that is very repressive. Mm -hmm. And so you don't hear about the accomplishments and the and, and the achievements we've done. Exactly. And but but you have a phone. And in your phone there's a whole new different world of reality of importance, of discovery. And if you just Google your phone and you go in there for more than Instagram, and even in Instagram and Facebook, there's so much information. Um, but the question is, how is your life geared? What can you really do with it? You know, if you get new information, can you optimize it? And that's really one of the challenges. Yeah. You know? Thank you. I'm just going to film